How does denial ruin my relationship? <laughs> well, with all of these questions, where I think we've first got to ask ourselves, what's the purpose of denial? Mm -hmm. And then we would then be able to see how it's probably going to ruin a relationship. Yeah. <laughs> And what, what, is the, what are the reasons why we use denial? Now, here that we could say there's denial of a number of things. There's firstly denial of truth. Mm -hmm. Why do we use denial of truth? Then there's denial of emotion. Why do we use denial of emotion? And what, what is it that causes us to want denial? Yeah. Right? yeah. And I think that's where we need to start with this particular question. Yeah. Why do we want it? And then we'll look at what, it, what, what it terrible damage it does. Yeah. Mm. So if we look at denial of God's truth, what impact does that have on our relationship? Well, the reason, if we say why we want God, to deny God's truth first, yep. um, truth has the effect of, of opening up the soul. Mm -hmm. It has the effect also, though, potentially of causing us to see a lot of things that we can't see and therefore we might need to feel about them yeah. and then we might need to act upon them. Yeah. Now the, what denial achieves is it, is it helps us deny our feeling about things. Mm -hmm. It helps us shut down the recognition of truth and how we feel about the truth. Yeah. It also helps us shut down emotion. If we deny that we have a certain thing happening, then we don't have to feel about it. Yeah. And then also, we, it, we have, it has the effect of, um, what was the third thing I mentioned? Which, um, About taking action. Taking action. It, so, so what it does is it helps me avoid having to take some action in the relationship mm -hmm. in order to fix the particular problem. Yep. In other words, I can get to sit back and go, no, there's no problem here. And in saying there's no problem here, I get to not have to feel things that I need to feel. Mm -hmm. I get to not have to recognise things that I need to recognise. And I get to not have to do something about them. Yeah. So, so denial is a great way of avoiding a whole heap of things. Mm -hmm. That's what we think. That's right? what we think. That's yeah. what we think. That's yeah. why we use it. So we, we have this false idea, look, if I don't want to know the truth, I don't have to actually confront anything about myself or my partner. I don't have to feel, or my partner doesn't have to feel any painful emotion. Mm -hmm. And me or my partner doesn't have to take any action based on the recognition of truth Correct. in our relationship. Correct. So we think it's a good idea. But, but. It's, a, but it's a terrible idea. <laughs> it's a terrible idea for, for a lot of reasons. <laughs> so let's look at how it actually ruins our relationship sure. then. Because we think it's good, but in reality, it's not so good. Yes. So we've listed some things down here. Yeah. When we deny the truth, we essentially can't change to become more loving or truthful. So that's a big problem. It is. So if you're already not very loving and your relationship's not very happy, and already it's got problems, but denying things is only going to make it worse, mm -hmm. not better. Yep. <laughs> like we need, to, we need to see that. Like we yep. need to come to, to understand that denial of a problem doesn't make the problem go away. All it does, and particularly with the way God's laws work, all it does is grow the problem, actually, because yeah. yeah. God's laws are trying to expose the problem to you. Yeah. God's laws are like hitting you with a, initially with a feather and then eventually with a hammer and then <laughs> <laughs> with a brick and then with a truck, you know, yeah. Yeah. trying to expose to you what the problem is, right? Yeah. So your life becomes more and more and more and more painful. Yeah. Your relationship becomes more and more and more painful every time you deny something. So you're far better off accepting the truth about something than denying it. Yeah. Yeah. Far better. Yeah. Uh, I often think about relationships and people in relationships and it's like you you already know, that, say, there's issues. You you know the boat's a bit leaky that yeah. you're sailing in. Yeah. And you, you're trying to do all these things to bucket out the, out the water. And dealing with the effects. Dealing with the effects. Mm. When, you, when you go into denial and a few of the other things that we've talked about it's like you actually like cut a gaping hole in the bottom of the boat and it's just going to sink <laughs> that's what most people believe you well mean. no i mean when you actually deny things they think oh, they're plugging course, a hole yes. but when you deny things you actually, actually increase, increase the hole, the hole yeah. and you're going to sink much more rapidly yeah and the chances of the relationship breaking up are much greater than if you actually had a look at the truth and work through the issues yeah yeah. And, and facing the truth actually is the beginning of putting a plug in the hole and Correct. stopping you having to keep 
bucketing. And also stopping you having to keep dealing with the effects all the time. Yes. The effects are, you know, the, a lot of people's relationships, instead of having this nice, joyful, creative process in their relationship, they're always just dealing with the outcomes of their poor decisions. Yeah. And, uh, and now obviously that is never going to work either. Eventually the boat sinks under those conditions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, also, when we deny truth, we prevent ourselves having a relationship with God. So me or my partner having a relationship with God. Yes, because God has a, everything in God's universe and all of God's laws are based around truth. So, so if we try to deny truth, we are immediately preventing a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And the way God's created the human soul, you are also immediately preventing a, rela a proper relationship with your partner. Yeah. So, so whether you or your partner deny truth, you're going to prevent your relationship from further growth. Yep. And you're also going to prevent intimacy, obviously. Mm -hmm. You know, the more, the more you're in denial, the more less intimate your relationship will become. Yeah, there's no truth that opens a soul or draws you closer together. No. Yeah. Okay, um, we also, both of us get to prevent our experience of painful emotion. Yes, and, and we've talked a lot in the emotional section about how it's only the release of painful emotions that causes your behaviour to change. So, so if you're in denial of the emotional experience, you prevent the emotional experience from occurring, then there is no chance of your half of the soul changing, mm. and therefore there is no chance of the relationship improving between yourself and your partner. Mm. Now, if your partner and you both do it, then obviously there's going to be a huge amount of problems in the relationship. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And following on from that, that you've already mentioned, that when we deny truth, say we're the partners, both of us, we both get to avoid taking action. Yes. And that's a big issue. Well, I see a lot of people want to avoid taking action. Sometimes the action might mean that they have to separate for a while to work through their issues. Sometimes the action might be going to some kind of therapist to help them work through their issues. Sometimes the action might be that they need to actually go and experience some emotions privately. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the action might mean that they need to break up, mm -hmm. you know, depending on how bad the situation is and recognition of truth causes you to see that you need to break up. And that has a whole heap of other financial and other problems associated yeah. with it and emotional issues associated with it. So most people love to avoid taking action unless they're forced into doing it. Yeah. Now that's unfortunate in a relationship. If, if you want a relationship that grows, you need to take action all the time to make it grow yeah. rather than trying to avoid taking action. Yeah. And denial helps you avoid taking action. Yeah, it yeah. does. So not a very good tool <laughs> for, for the growth of your relationship. <laughs> okay, so let's go through these in a bit more detail. Mm -hmm. When I deny emotion in my relationship, I and my partner cannot take responsibility for emotions that we choose to deny. Mm. So, so part, of, part of emotional, part of your self-responsibility that God's trying to teach you is that you need to take responsibility for how you feel mm -hmm. and not expect other people to take responsibility for how you feel. Yeah. Now, whenever I'm in denial, I'm expecting my environment to take on how I'm feeling and, and I remain unconscious mm -hmm. or, or semi-conscious mm -hmm. about how I'm feeling and I'm expecting my, my environment to take up the slack and to actually deal with the projections of how I'm feeling onto them. That's a very unloving thing to do to so, the environment. So, yeah, and when you speak about an environment in the context of a relationship, very often we're asking our partner to take up the slack of our denied emotions, aren't we? All the time, generally. Yeah. Yeah. So anything that we don't want to feel, we want our partner's help to avoid feeling. Yeah. And anything our partner doesn't want to feel, generally they want our help to avoid their feeling of that particular thing. Yeah. And, and this sets up as, so the, the denial is what starts the process. If I didn't deny the truth and didn't deny my emotion, then obviously I wouldn't do those things to my partner and I wouldn't allow my partner to do those things to me either. Yeah. Yeah, or to themselves, <laughs> or to myself. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, you, you, the first, the, the four supplemental questions 
always mm. kick in when with regard to all of these factors yeah mm. yeah so change is going to require that both me and my partner deal with essentially the addictions that you're talking about there and experience our painful emotions yes but addictions are another subject altogether i feel this is all about the denial of my emotion mm -hmm. not dealing with my addictions mm -hmm. that's another subject i feel here what we're trying to do is help people get to the point of just looking at their denial yep. like the feeling in them that they want to avoid the truth about a lot of things and they want to avoid the emotional truth about a lot of things yeah so so for example when the husband looks at another woman they want to avoid the emotional truth of how that makes them feel they want to avoid the emotional truth about what it means from his perspective inside of his heart that he actually is interested in other women and might take the opportunity to to take the whole thing further if given the circumstances and how does that make you feel mm. you want to avoid a whole heap of feelings and that's why you deny it's even a problem so what do we do we'd say to ourselves in that place oh it doesn't matter where he gets his you know what's appetite. The appetite as long as he comes home we're, you know we're fine that that is a method of denial minimizing the mm -hmm. thing is denying minimizing justifying or shifting the blame is all denial mm -hmm. it's all a way of you not getting to have to feel what you probably already feel or know is already within you yeah. but you're completely avoiding now the problem with the denial is as we've mentioned already it causes a huge amount of problems in the relationship and therefore growth is not possible mm -hmm. So basically what we're saying, in order to change in the relationship, both parties have to desire to become, to come out of this state of denial and to become more sensitive to the real emotions that are going on or the real dynamics that are going on. Yeah, I, I would call it awareness. They yep. need to get out of purposeful denial mm -hmm. and into a state firstly of intellectual awareness. Yep. But even once they get through that, there also is another stage where they have to go into some kind of emotional awareness of what's mm -hmm. really going on in order to, to repair any damage to their relationship and then build upon that repaired job, you know, to grow it to the point where it's perfect. Yeah. And, and if, if they, they choose denial, that is not possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we need to get out of denial and into the opposite of denial, which is awareness allow yourself to be aware and look at all of the emotional reasons in particular why you wish to deny something that's really happening in your relationship rather yeah. than fixing it yeah yeah okay so then let's extend that further when we deny god's truth so we're talking about denying their the emotions and the in, the truth of the interactions that are going on in our relationship mm -hmm. there's a further step that people who want to follow the way are going to want to apply mm -hmm. if they're going to be successful yeah. and that is to look at God's truth about these issues and so when we want to deny God's truth about the state of our relationship what kinds of things happen then well if we look at God's laws um, and see the reflection on God's truth we can see that if I deny God's truth and I'm also denying that for example deny, I'm denying the law of compensation mm -hmm. now the, what the law of compensation is is it's telling me that all of my personal pain is because i'm personally choosing to hold on to an unloving condition at yeah. some point yeah. so even personal pain that occurs in my relationship is the result of my choice to hold on to some unloving condition within myself and my partner's choice to hold on to some unloving condition within themselves but my personal sadness or pain is directly in proportion to my choice to hold on to my own unloving condition. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm not respecting God's truth, I will not see the power of that. <coughs> the power of that is that I can, I can um, feel that the main reason why I'm in pain is, is because I'm choosing to do something that's unloving. Yep. And I also have the ability and responsibility to change that if I'm ever going to become more loving mm -hmm. as an individual and therefore more happy. Mm -hmm. So my ignorance of God's law, in this case of compensation, causes me to avoid God's truth on the matter and causes me to start to believe that my personal pain is caused by everybody else yeah. rather than me. Yeah. And, and then we have a tendency to blame our partner for our personal pain, yep. right? Which is even 
worse now because now we're putting a huge fissure, mm -hmm. a huge break between us and our partner. And, and in doing so, we're actually completely disowning the personal responsibility that comes from the fact that all emotional pain that I have and all physical pain that I have is a complete result of me avoiding God's law of compensation when it comes to love. Yeah, and that's a, exactly what you, what you just said there. The purpose of the law of compensation is, is to bring us pain so that we know there's an injury within us. Correct. And many times in partner relationships, it's so tempting to blame the other person for the personal pain. Correct. You did A, so I feel B. Yes, and that's not true. No. I feel B because of a whole lot of reasons which are usually have almost nothing to do with the person doing A, yeah. but rather a whole heap to do with all the unfelt and unhealed emotional things that happened during our childhood and our adolescence growing up and all of our unloving choices in relationships and all of our expectations and demands all happening. That's why I felt B <laughs> yes. from your action A. Yeah. You know, so your action A is just really a trigger. And even then it's not, you know, it wouldn't have triggered anything if I was in a state of love or at one with God. So, so why is it that I'm feeling all this pain? It's got to be something to do with myself. And that's what the law of compensation says. Denial helps me go, that doesn't happen. It's all somebody else's problem. That's what denial does. Well, denial, yeah, denial in, in two ways I see this happening with the law of compensation. One is to just deny that the pain is even there, even though you keep racking it up year after year. And feeling it, your body's showing you in the mirror as well. Yeah. You know, what's racking up as well. So we want to deny even that that's happening or that mm -hmm. pain is there. And the second way is to deny the, the cause of the pain is due to some error within ourselves. Yes, and I than... suppose this brings us to the denial of the of another law, which yes. is the law of cause and effect. Yes. So here we go, another law we're in denial of. We're saying we've got all these effects, like we've got pain in our relationship, pain in our body, our partner's got pain in their body, we're growing old, we're getting sick and you know all sorts of things are happening in our relationship that cause the relationship stress. And then we're saying to ourselves, but all of that is caused by some mysterious thing that I've got no idea what it is. And so what I do is I go and take my pills and put on my lotions and do all the other things needed yeah. to improve my lot in life. When the real thing I need to do is understand what caused it, which was my holding on to an unloving condition within myself, yeah. to either towards myself or towards others. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's caused it. And if we're not willing to look at cause and effect, then we can't really within the relationship problem solve anything, can we? we yes. And it, and it gets even worse. If I deny cause and effect even exists, then I'm going to be totally focused on trying to fix the effects without understanding their causes, yeah. which is ludicrous when yeah. you think about it and a stupid action to take because the cause will keep happening and therefore cause the effect no matter what you do about it. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, it, it's a really silly way to treat a relationship, but, but denial helps us be in that state yeah. where we go, no, I'm just going to deal with the effect, take my lotions and potions, <laughs> And hopefully things will improve and things never do. No. And, and, and eventually, you know, the relationship is going to break up. Even if you keep it the whole time on earth, it's going to break up sometime in your spirit state, world state after you've died. Yeah. And, and all the things you're avoiding are all going to come out anyway. Yeah. So it doesn't make much it doesn't point. Make There's sense. not much sense to do it whatsoever. And, and the way I see a lot of people um, remaining in denial about this law is that they often, they often attribute the effect as a cause almost or they or they attribute a different cause to the effect they don't want god's soul-based hmm. truth about the issue do they they want that they are oh, i've got sexual issues that's because of a physical issue within myself or, yeah or i've got cancer that's because you know i've got cancer and there's yeah. nobody really knows the reason yeah. why yeah. you know what i mean yeah. Yeah. and these are the kind of things that could all be helped in a relationship and in fact relationships often do cause a person to have quite significant illnesses when they act out of harmony with love, yeah. including things like cancer. Yeah. And, and if they could see the unloving behaviour and, and address it, then the cancer would disappear or the illness would disappear. Yeah. But, but of course, most people don't see it that way. They instead focus on the effect and they even go even further. And they, like in the case of cancer, they want the other party to look after them until they die, you know? Yeah which is a part of the reason why they got the cancer in the first place. And, yeah. and, and there's all sorts of uh, underlying issues mm -hmm. that, all are, that are all ignored by denying that they exist. Yeah. 
And I suppose the other thing that we're now talking about is how the law of attraction brings us things. So we're in ignorance of that law too. Mm -hmm. we're, now, we're now saying, everything that happens to me has got nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. And God's saying, no, I'm sorry. Everything that happens to you has got a whole heap of things to do to you, about mm -hmm. you. And, and the reality is, while everything that happens to you isn't necessarily you, because other people have free will and they can choose to do things to you without you being involved, the reality is we attract many of these events because of something we need to heal inside of ourselves. And when we're in denial, we get to also not believe that. <laughs> yes. And even if you think about re relationships, often the, the very partner we attract is part of that law trying to help us Correct. to to heal some issues or to see some truth about ourselves yes. and very often people wish to deny that 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 they had any part in attracting some of the injuries or the the issues of love in their partner yes so you quite often hear a man say why did i attract that bitch into my life you know <laughs> you know why do i keep getting these kind of women in my life yeah. well got a lot to do with you you're the center of the of what's <laughs> of the happening to you yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and the women may say why did i get that mongrel in my life you know that bastard why is he in my life you know i just get rid of all these bastards and, blah, blah, blah. and the reality is well it's got a lot to do with you what you need to work your way through emotionally has got a lot to yeah. do with the attraction and if you stopped judging it so much you would probably have a, a, a lot better ch chance to not deny it so much. Yeah. But when we judge things a lot, we ha that supports our denial. Yeah. And we should probably point out that when we say, like, you're the centre of the attraction or you're the one who keeps attracting these things, it's not to say that unloving behaviour in either yourself or your partner is, is deserved. No, not at all. It's... <clears throat> in fact, quite the opposite. Yeah. It's definitely not deserved. However... The question becomes, well, why am I attracting it yeah. and why is it causing me pain? Yeah. Has to do with something going on inside of me. Yeah. So, so while we do not believe somebody treating you badly is deserved, um, and even if you're a terrible, evil person, it's still not deserved. <laughs> right? When people need to treat you fairly and maybe restrict you if yeah. you're evil, but it's certainly not deserved that you get treated badly, even mm -hmm. if you're evil. God doesn't treat you badly, even when you're evil. However, God's laws do have an operation upon the soul. And the more evil you become, the more difficult your life is going to be. Yeah. And, uh, and the more, you know, less security and less safety you're going to have and so forth. And we need to see the relationship between our unloving choices and what's happening to us. Yeah. And, and also that God is lovingly trying to correct us and educate us. Mm -hmm. And while we're in denial of these, even these three basic, what I would call laws of natural love, even when we're in denial of those, we're basically saying to God, no, I don't want to be educated. Yeah. Right? So denial causes a lack of education. It's like a person in a third world country not being able to read and you go up to him and say, can you read? And he says, yes. Right? Which is what we often do. We say we've got no problems or when we have many and he, he would be saying that he's got, he's got no problem, he can read. Now, how is that going to affect the rest of his life? Well, quite intensely, actually. He's not going to be able to read for the rest of his life, probably, unless somebody teaches him or he teaches himself. Now, he's, if he's in denial that he's even got the problem, that's probably never going to happen. Yeah. 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 And it's exactly the same. So we, you're saying we prevent our own education through denial. Yes. And the final thing that we talked about with regards to denial and denial of God's truth is that within a relationship, if we deny the gift of free will that each, each party has, then we're very likely to disrespect the will of the mm -hmm. other person mm -hmm. uh, or to even submit to them manipulating our, our will. will. Mm. Yep. Uh, feeling that one person's will is more important or that we both must compromise and bend our will to the other mm -hmm. uh, without really looking at God's truth about the matter, which is that, well, there's so much involved in the, the gift yeah, of so free will. Yes, we, we could talk for weeks about just yeah. the issue of will and how it's used in a relationship. But if we examine it just briefly, while I'm in denial of God's truth, there's a large likelihood that I'm also in denial of the gift of free will that God's given each party, each mm -hmm. half of, of the soul in the relationship. And, and while I deny that the other person or myself has free will, 
there was a lot of things I'll choose to do. I'll choose to deny my personal responsibility. Mm -hmm. I'll choose to deny your personal responsibility. I'll choose to take responsibility for things that are not my fault. Yeah. And or want you to take responsibility for things that are not your fault. Or I will refuse to take responsibility for things that are not my fault, that are mm -hmm. my fault, mm -hmm. and expect you and and allow you to do the same. And none of those things are going to ever have any positive effect on our relationship. No. Yeah. Mm. Very important. Yes. So I suppose you could say in summary, yes. denial, bad habit, <laughs> very bad habit. <laughs> and and we need to find the real emotional reasons why we do it. And we need to eradicate it from firstly ourselves, but also eventually eradicate it from the relationship itself. So both parties are never in a state of denial of what's going on in their relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Once we get to that point, we've got some hope to grow our good relationship. Mm -hmm. If we don't, we're going to ruin our good relationship. Yeah. So while both, or while, really while one or both parties are choosing denial, willfully wanting to remain ignorant about the true nature of the relationship and the implications of what's really going on in mm -hmm. the relationship, then the relationship is going to, as we said in our question, it's going to be ruined, basically. Yes. It's going, it does not have any life. It's either going to be a permanently bad relationship, mm -hmm. which we observe many, many couples have, yeah. or it's going to completely disintegrate. Yeah. It, can, it can't be any different yeah. while both one or both parties in the relationship are choosing denial. Yeah. It just can't be any different, Yeah, which is sad. It is sad. Mm. And um, I'm now anticipating people out there viewing this video thinking about how they now need to force their partner out of denial, which is... <laughs> well, in itself, that's a denial. Forcing them to face truth, which is, as you said, a denial. Yeah, it's a denial of your own responsibilities in the relationship. You need to start with yourself. What, what are my choices of denial? That's where we need to begin. Mm -hmm. Most people who come to us and discuss the denial of their partner have actually more denial in themselves than their partner has within themselves. That's yeah. what we've noticed. And we find that very interesting, that, that the average person can't see themselves, but thinks they can see their partner very clearly. Yeah. And, and that in itself is a form of denial. Mm -hmm. You're denying what's inside of you. The biggest problem here is not what's inside of your partner, it's inside of what's, insi inside of your, what's, what's inside of yourself yeah. and your denial of it. Yeah. yeah. If you stop denying what's inside of yourself, your, you and your partner will automatically begin having a better re relationship because your partner doesn't have to address a whole heap of issues and problems and deal with a whole heap of emotional shutdown and everything that they had to deal with before because you're taking far more responsibility for your life than you ever have. Mm. And that's going to help your relationship. It is. And I feel that the truth is an attractive quality. Mm. It just is. And from my own experience, having you as my partner who really values truth and desperately avoids denial mm -hmm. uh, you didn't force that upon me but it was a very attractive i think that's something that i've said to you from the beginning mm. that that it's very attractive to have someone in your life facing personal truth all of the time mm -hmm. and it inspires the partner to do the same to do the same thing so if your partner isn't inspired to get out of denial themselves my suggestion is it's probably highly likely that you yourself are not out of denial either. Mm. And um, in the unlikely condition that your partner is avoiding, it is in denial, but you are not avoiding, you know, you're out of denial, then you need to decide uh, and make some serious decisions about you and take action about your relationship. Because at the end of the day, your relationship cannot improve beyond what it is without both parties being out of denial. Mm. Yep. Great. <laughs>